This episode presents an adaptation of the classic fairy tale, Sleeping Beauty, except with a bit of a twist. Instead of being asleep for a hundred years, our princess can't fall asleep. Not to worry though, she's got a bit of magic on her side. Before we get started, cozy yourself up in bed. Take some deep breaths, inhaling, pausing for a moment at the top, and then exhaling slowly. Just continue with that cycle of breath for a few rounds and let your exhale be a bit longer than your inhale. This tells your body that it's time to relax. Gently scan your body from top to bottom. Take your time and notice if there's any remaining tension. If you find any, just pause for a moment and breathe into that area of your body. Give it permission to relax. Now, let's begin our story. Once upon a time, in a land far, far away, there lived a king and queen. They were a happy couple. They had a beautiful castle sitting high up on a hill. They had shiny crowns and velvety purple cloaks. Everything around them was quite regal. They appreciated what they had and knew they had a good life. But something was about to make their lives even better. The king and queen were expecting a child, a baby girl to be precise. A royal baby was certainly something to celebrate. But the queen worried about one thing. She had always been somewhat of a dreamer. She could spend hours and hours dreaming about the future or considering the past. Sometimes she forgot to pay attention to the present, missing the wonders right in front of her eyes. She wanted her daughter to be grounded and present. To stop and smell the flowers. To see the world as it is, rather than as it was or as it might be. The Queen had once heard about a grounding spell for people prone to daydreaming. She searched far and wide, but couldn't find it. She consulted magic books and talked to wizards and warlocks to no avail. She tried herbs, potions and tinctures, but nothing could guarantee her daughter would be different from her. Just as she was about to lose hope, the queen had an idea. When she was younger, she'd heard stories about seven magical fairies who had the power to help those in need. One evening, when the nightshade plants began to bloom, the queen sat by her bed in the light of the full moon. 
she called to the fairies to help her. Within seconds, seven tiny dots of light flew one by one in through her window like a rainbow of fireflies. Red, blue, green, yellow, purple, grey and white. As they landed, they grew bigger and bigger until they were the same size as the Queen. You called for us, they said in unison. The Queen nodded and told the fairies about her worries. The fairies shook their heads, acknowledging the Queen's request. They would return once the child was born. With a wave of their wands, they shrunk back into colourful specks of light and flew out the window. The queen was so relieved and she lay down to bed without a single worry. After much discussion, they decided to name the child Zella. She would be the most perfect princess in the land, and she would want for nothing. The day Zella was born, the king and queen saw her tiny little hands and her chubby little cheeks and experienced a love they had never known before. And so, They did what all kings and queens would do. They decided to throw a party. It would be the grandest party ever thrown in the kingdom. And all to celebrate the new princess. And the guests of honour would of course be the seven fairies. The night of the party, visitors came from across the kingdom to celebrate the little Zella's birth. They dressed in the finest suits and skirts and danced the whole night long. The fairies, though, were nowhere to be seen. The king and queen were worried their invitations had gone astray. What would the fairies think if they didn't know they'd been invited? But then, just as the clock struck midnight, seven dots of light flew in through the ballroom window like fireflies. In a whirl of sparkles, they transformed into the seven fairies, standing in the middle of the dance floor. The yellow fairy tapped her wand on her hand and turned to face the crowd. As is proper when a new princess is born, we've come with gifts for the babe, she said. The yellow fairy waved her wand twice in a circle and said, From me, she will have the gift of happiness. As she spoke, a beam of yellow light leaped from the tip of her wand and landed squarely on the little baby's forehead. The baby's eyes lit up. The green fairy spoke next and waved her wand twice in a circle. From me, she will have the gift of patience. The green light touched the baby on the forehead and she sighed, content. The blue fairy waved her wand twice in a circle and said, 
From me, she will have the gift of good humor. The baby giggled. The red fairy waved her wand twice in a circle and said, From me, she will have the gift of true love. The baby's cheeks flushed. The purple fairy waved her wand twice in a circle and said, From me, she will have the gift of common sense. The baby sat a little straighter. And then things got a bit strange. The grey fairy, who was the oldest of the seven, spoke next. Now, the grey fairy had always been very kind, and the other fairies cared for her deeply. But they had to admit, she'd become a bit dotty in old age. She was as happy as ever, but her mind wasn't as razor sharp as it once had been. As she waved her wand twice in a circle, the other fairies held their breath. I know you're worried your child will be a daydreamer, she said. And so, from me, the child will have the gift of never missing a moment of life's wonders. The king and queen beamed with delight. This sounded like the most thoughtful gift of them all. But the other fairies were nervous. What strange phrasing, Yellow whispered to Blue. Why did she put it that way? Green asked. Oh dear, said Red. As the grey fairy said the words, a grey beam shot from the tip of her wand. It zigzagged across the room, bouncing off two chandeliers and a gold platter before landing on the baby's forehead. The baby's eyes widened, her pupils dilated. Something had happened. The gift had indeed been given, but none of the fairies were quite sure what it would do. The white fairy, being the last in line, tried her best to patch things up. From me, the child will have the gift of good luck, she said, hoping it would be enough to cover all the bases. The baby clenched her little fists and squealed with delight. The ballroom filled with applause for the fairies, who took a bow and transformed back into a rainbow of fireflies, fluttering out the window into the night. Zella was a very happy baby. She never cried. But there was one thing that set her apart from all the other babies in the realm. Zella didn't sleep. Many babies sleep at inconvenient times or turn their days to nights. But this wasn't what Zella did. Zella simply did not sleep at all. And she didn't cry about it either. From dawn till dusk, back again, Zella was wide awake. She watched every butterfly. She noticed every bird singing in the windowsill. She smelled every sweet bun baking in the oven. She heard every note from a guitar. But she never, ever slept. 
Her parents tried everything to get her to sleep. They got her fluffier blankets. They got her pillows. They made special sleep sacks and tried potions and spells. But the baby wouldn't sleep. Her eyes were wide, bright and attentive, which was wonderful. But they were that way all the time. It took an army of nannies to help with Zella as she grew, for she never, ever tired. As a toddler, she walked and toddled all over the castle grounds, 24 hours a day. When she turned four, she loved to colour in her colouring book, and she coloured 24 hours a day. At five, she began flute and dance lessons, and she would play her flute and dance around the ballroom 24 hours a day. Needless to say, her parents were tired. Her nannies were tired. Everyone in Zella's life loved the girl deeply, but they were all extremely tired. When Zella was eight, she started to wonder why the entire castle went quiet at eleven every night. The lamps went out, the fires were dampened, the stone hallways grew cold, and all the people in the castle crawled into these things called beds, closed their eyes, and didn't move until the sun came up. It was very strange to the girl, who could close her eyes just as well as anyone else, but never felt the urge to stay perfectly still for eight hours in a row. It's called sleeping, one of her nannies told her in an attempt to explain it to the child. But it was such a strange concept to put into words. Zella desperately wanted to understand sleep. Her own bedroom had no bed, which made her wonder about the name too. It had chairs and toys and a lovely floor, but no bed. She didn't need one. One night, she crept down the hall to one of the guest bedrooms. They all had beds. She crawled into it, felt her body sink down into the sheets, and snuggled deep beneath the large and puffy blankets. It was a lovely feeling to lay in a bed. She understood why people liked it. Zella pulled the covers up to her chin. She smelled the clean cotton scent and felt the weight of the blanket curve around her small body. She took a deep breath in, let it out, and closed her eyes. The backs of her eyelids were dark, save for a few flashes of light that flittered by every once in a while. She listened to the sounds of the sleeping castle. Somewhere, a door creaked on its hinges. Somewhere, a light breeze 
gently rattle at a window. And somewhere else, footsteps echoed from a stone hallway as the castle guards patrolled. Zella found all the night sounds fascinating. She loved the smell of the clean sheets. She loved the feeling of the crisp linens on her arms and legs. She wiggled her toes and giggled as they caught in the sheets at the bottom of the bed. Despite how much fun she had, She wondered why everyone did this for all night, every night. Is this sleep? She wondered. She must be missing something, she thought. That night, she lay in bed for hours and hours. When she'd had her fill, She got up and tiptoed quietly down the hall to her own bedroom and coloured in her old colouring book until the rest of the castle woke up. Zella never told anyone about her love of laying in beds. She crept down the hallway to the guest room about once a week and snuggled in the sheets, listening to the sleeping castle. It was her little secret. And from that secret grew Zella's greatest wish. To sleep. To really sleep. And most of all, Zella wanted to dream. She wanted to know what it was like to close her eyes and drift off to another faraway land. When she was 12, a friend in the castle had told her about something called dreaming. Zella's mouth fell open when she learned that people who sleep have other lives where they can do anything, where they can be anything. They could fly. They could swim forever. They could be a dragon if they wanted. She wasn't a jealous girl by nature. She was very kind, very friendly, and usually very happy. But the desire to sleep and dream burned within her. She wanted to know this unreal place. And so, one evening, the week the nightshade plants began to bloom, Zella sat by her window and called out to the seven fairies. The seven little dots of light flew in through her window and one by one grew bigger until the fairies stood before her. Hello, dear Zella, they said in unison. Hello, fairies, she replied. She told them about her secret, about sneaking to the guest bedroom about wanting to close her eyes and fall asleep, and that her greatest desire was someday to dream. The fairies sighed in unison. The grey fairy stepped forward. I'm afraid this was my doing, dear Zella, she said. You've never missed a moment of life's wonders but you've also never had a rest from them either. Zella nodded attentively. The yellow fairy explained that they could redo their gifts to her, but there was a catch. She'd have to wait 
seven years until she was 19 for the new gift to become fully effective. Zella pondered for a moment. She didn't want to wait to sleep, but waiting seven years was better than never. She decided to give it a shot. The fairies pulled out their wands, waved them twice in a circle, and each spoke in turn. First, the gift of happiness. Then, the gifts of patience, good humor, and common sense. Next, the gift of love would bring her greatest desire in life, and the gift of good luck. Then, as the rainbow beam of magic was bursting from the tips of their wands, the Grey Fairy blurted out something quite unexpected. Spinning wheel, she said. At that moment, the magic was completed. The beam flurried across the room and landed on Zella's forehead. The other fairies turned to the Grey Fairy. Spinning wheel? they asked. Yes, that's the phrase I was trying to think of yesterday, she said, when we were talking about weaving. Yesterday? Weaving? The other fairies squeaked. The Grey Fairy nodded, smiling satisfied with her excellent recollection. The yellow fairy spoke up, explaining to Zella that with good luck on her side, something to do with love or a spinning wheel would lead her to sleep and dream in seven years. Hopefully, the fairies thought, for once again, the grey fairy had done some rather questionable magic. Zella was pragmatic and didn't want to waste a moment going down the wrong path. So, as she grew older, she turned down every suitor, even though there were many from all across the land. She waited patiently for her 19th birthday. And she was glad to, given that she still had the gift of happiness and patience in the meantime. After seven long years, the eve of her 19th birthday finally arrived. But on her birthday, Nothing happened. No Prince Charming. No spinning wheel. Zella worked hard to conceal her disappointment. A month into being 19, and she still hadn't met her true love. And she still hadn't slept. Six months in, and her parents started to notice something a bit different about their daughter. She was overly eager, as if in anticipation of something. They didn't know about her encounter with the fairies. She'd never told them. She didn't want them to think she was unsatisfied with her wonderful life. But, of course, a mother knows when her daughter is acting differently. The queen had been thinking of ways to ease Zella's spirits. What she needed, the queen thought, was a hobby. The queen remembered hearing stories of a funny little man who spun straw into gold. 
the man lived alone at the end of a twisting lane. Tell me the name of your firstborn child, the little man said. Why, it's Sella, the queen responded. What a lovely name, the man cheered. He gave the queen a discount on the spinning wheel, which the queen brought home in a special carriage. And so, Zella learned to spin. She spun and spun as hard as she could, remembering the fairy's words. But no matter how much she spun, she still couldn't sleep. Her focus on spinning began to take over her life. A month before her 20th birthday, nothing had changed. Seeing that spinning hadn't resolved the problem, her mother suggested she try something new with the spinning wheel. Distractions don't work on me, mother, Zella replied. I'm always paying attention. With that, Zella dropped her head onto the table in exhaustion. It landed with a thud, causing her to rub the knot that was beginning to form on her forehead. Her mother helped her up, and forgetting her daughter was a woman now, kissed her forehead to make it better, the way mothers do. And in that instant, Zella was overcome with a desire to lay down. She climbed onto the bed in the guest bedroom, closed her eyes, and felt her mind grow quiet. For the first time, she didn't listen to the sounds of the castle or notice the feeling of the covers hugging her. Instead, she slid deeper and deeper into the darkness of her closed eyes and the silence of her own mind. She'd finally fallen asleep. And a glorious sleep it was. She saw castles and dragons. She heard the songs of mermaids and bluebirds. She smelled the finest meals from all over the world. And best of all, she flew. Zella jumped, and instead of falling back down, she just continued up and up. So this was dreaming. How perfect, she thought. The next morning, Zella woke up to find herself tucked into the guest bed. Her mother sat beside her, and the seven fairies flew in through the window. Apparently, the magic had just required a spinning wheel and a kiss from someone who loved her. It was Zella's mother who had completed the gift. Thank you, mother, Zella said. That truly was the best gift anyone has ever given me. And from that day on, Zella never had trouble falling asleep. She dreamt of flying with dragons, and other incredible things. 
and they all lived and slept happily ever after. <laughs> 